Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to replace the rear shocks on a BMW E90 3 Series. This particular car I'm working with here today is a 2010 335D sedan. This tutorial will cover how to remove the trunk liner, replacing the lower shock mounts, and installing upgraded upper polyurethane shock mounts. I am currently partnered with Turner Motorsport. They are a reputable BMW supplier that has been present in the community for a number of years. With every sale from their website, using the link in the video description, I do get a bit of cutback to help keep my channel going. Links to all the parts used in the video will be included in the video description. Start by safely elevating the rear of the vehicle, and you will need a jack stand as a safety. Using a 17mm, remove the lug studs. The trunk will be open for quite a while, so it's a good idea to deactivate the trunk light. This can be done by flipping the trunk latch into the closed position using a screwdriver. Make sure you do release this before closing the trunk after. Using a small standard screwdriver, remove the two plastic clips at the top of the rear trunk trim. These only disconnect from one side. Here's a close up of the clip. As you can see there is a snap clip on the one side and a tang on the other side. There is only two. With these removed, this will expose two Phillips screws which need to be removed as well. Now onto the inside of the trunk. There will be two clips which need to be removed on each side. Use a nylon trim tool to remove the center first. This will retract the tabs and then you can pull out the clip. Do the same for the opposite side. Take your time so you don't break the clips. Lift up the trunk liner, this will need to be removed after. Pull up the gasket along the back side of the trim. Lift up the trim slightly from the back side and then push it forward to disconnect it from the loops. Finally remove the trunk liner. Starting with the passenger side first, removing the trunk liner will expose the top of the shock mount. There will be four black plastic clips which need to be removed. Again, they are the same style as the rear plastic trunk piece. The center needs to be disconnected first in order to retract the tabs, then pull out the clip. One will be hidden in behind the removable panel which exposes the battery. Flip out the panel and then lift out. Remove the last clip then. Push the seat forward and then pull out the liner. Remove the rubber cap at the top of the strut mount. Using a 3 inch drive ratchet with a 6mm socket, this will be used to hold the center shaft of the shock. The nut uses a 16mm. Remove the nut, it will be attached to a plate along with a rubber bushing. Now moving on to the bottom mount of the shock. You will need a special socket for this. It requires an E12. There are two at the bottom, one at this side and one at the other side. Make sure the socket is properly seated. These can strip and if they do, they will be a nightmare to remove. A dead blow hammer can be used to help ensure that socket is properly seated. The shock can be compressed by hand. These are worn so it's a lot easier than compared to the new ones. Then work out the rubber mount from the control arm by hand. A small pry tool can also be used as assistance. You will need to tilt the top out and to the back. That's the easiest method I've found. Now assembling the new struts. As mentioned at the start of the video, I will be using upgraded polyurethane bushings made by PowerFlex at the top of the shocks. The top bushing cap will need to be separated. We will be reusing the large metal washer and nut. With age, this can simply pull away, or you can use a scraper or a standard screwdriver to help pop it off. As you can see, the new polyurethane bushing will take place of the old factory bushing. Here in the package is the new replacements. I purchased these in black. They are available in other colors as well. It comes with both the bushings, sleeve, and lubricant. Here is a comparison between the old and new upgraded bushings. The old bushings are quite soft and the new versions have a slight amount of give. This will make more responsive handling in the rear end, reducing any chance of wandering while still maintaining a good ride comfort. First is installing the bottom bushing. Remove the locking nut from the bottom of the shock, install the new rubber bushing, and then install and tighten that nut. The bushing can be installed first on the car as well, it's a personal preference. There's a spot on the shock for the wrench, so the nut can be properly tightened. 
Both the spot on the shock and the nut use a 17mm. The torque specification for this nut is 28 foot-pounds or 38 newton meters. The metal cap from the old bump stops will need to be reused. It's just a tight fit over the bump stop. The bump stop is attached to the plastic cover. Insert the components onto the shock shaft. Next is installing the first part of the polyurethane bushing. Using the supplied lubricant, apply it to the faces where it will be touching any objects along with the center, where the shaft is slid through. There is plenty of lubricant in the small tube. Ensure all the areas are covered sufficiently. If no lubricant is applied, this can create a squeaking sound as well as premature failure of these bushings. Apply more lubricant to the bushing and install that as well. Then install the rubber cover. Again is the same process on the opposite side. The nut comes with the new shocks, remove this. Then install the new bushing. Again a spot on the shock and the nut uses a 17mm. The torque specifications for the nut is 28 foot-pounds or 38 newton meters. Install the metal cap onto the bump stop. Flip the shock around and install the bump stop and protective cap. Apply lubricant to the first bushing. Smear it onto the mounting surface and in the center. Install that rubber bushing and then install the metal sleeve. Finally installing the rubber cover. Back onto the car, compress the shock and insert it into the bottom portion first with the bushing onto the control arm. Make sure that top portion is inserted into the hole, then insert the two bolts. I did clean the bolts up with a wire brush and applied some medium grade thread locker. The torque specifications for these bolts is 44.2 foot-pounds or 60 newton meters. I did raise the control arm with a jack slightly to help push the top of the shock into place so I'm able to fully thread on the nut with the bushing. Again the bushing did have lubricant applied to the mounting faces and center hole. Depending on the shock used, the torque specification for the nut at the top if it's a M10 is 19.9 foot-pounds or 27 newton meters. If it's an M14, it'll be 27.2 foot-pounds or 37 newton meters. The rubber cover is then pushed back into place. Finally, the trunk liner is slid back into place. I started with the seat side first. The carpet needs to be pushed back around the trim. Insert the black clips where they were removed. Push in the outer portion first and then finish up pushing in the pin to expand the clips so everything is held into place properly. Now I'm moving on to the opposite side, again using the same process but with additional angles. First is safely elevating the vehicle along with using a jack stand. Then remove the wheel using a 17mm for the lug studs. Again this side will require the trunk liner to be removed. There is three black clips instead. Remove the center and then disconnect the clip. Pop open the seat so the front part of the liner can be removed. On this side, the rear storage tray will also need to be removed. It simply lifts out. Now the liner can be removed. Remove the rubber cap to expose the strut mount bolt. Again using a 6mm socket with a 3H drive ratchet and a 16mm wrench, loosen and remove that nut. Now back down to the bottom using a ratchet with a E12 socket. Remove the two bolts holding on the bottom mount. Then compress the shock and pull it out of the control arm. The newer shock is harder to compress but possible. Compress the shock and push it back into place on the lower control arm. You can still compress the top and push it into place. Once in place I applied thread locker to both the bottom bolts and then installed them. The torque specifications for these fasteners is 44.2 foot pounds or 60 newton meters. You'll need to jack up the control arm in order to help push this shock into place. Lubricant can also be applied to the protective cover as well to help push it through the hole. It is a tight fit. Make sure the rubber protective cover doesn't get pushed off. The shock was started with the jack and then finished up with the nut on the inside. You can see the shock is being pulled up into place as I'm tightening that nut. Again the plate with the metal bushing has lubricant applied before it is installed. This is a polyurethane bushing. 
Hold the center of the shock while tightening that nut. The torque specifications for an M10 will be 19.9 foot-pounds or 27 newton meters. If it's an M14, it'll be 27.2 foot-pounds or 37 newton meters. Finally, that rubber cover can be installed. The trunk liner is then reinstalled. Push it into place on the seat side first and then finish up with the rest. Reinstall all those clips that were removed. Install the plastic trim panel back into place. Clip it into place, then install the two Phillips fasteners. The rubber trunk gasket is pushed into place and finally you can finish up with the plastic retaining clips that were removed earlier. Install the trunk floor carpet. Install the side battery access panel. Install the caps of the fastener holes. Finally is installing the rear wheels. The torque specifications for the lug studs is 88.5 foot pounds or 120 newton meters. And you're officially done. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found the story helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.